Welcome to a Wednesday night edition of Taking It to the Nub. I'm your host, Boston Jimmy. And tonight, I have a guest. I've had, I, I, I might have had these, these folks on a while back, but um, I'm going to have Sinestro Cigars on tonight. And I'm going to have one of the co-founders, Coleman Fine. His other partner, I believe, is down in the Dominican working on some new projects. So we'll have to, uh, you know, catch up with him on the rebound. But we'll have Coleman on in in, in just a moment. Um, so with that, let us uh, do a little quick uh, uh, shout out to our sponsors. And we'll be bringing Coleman right in. Today's show is brought to you by Casa Cuevas Cigars. In the 19th century, Juan Cuevas, a Spanish immigrant from Santanda, began what was to be a family business which now spans four generations. Like others, fortunate enough to live and work in Pinar del Rio province of Cuba, Juan commenced cultivating tobacco, turning it into a successful business. Years later, in the Ciabo Valley of the Dominican Republic, Luis Cuevas Sr., Juan Jr.'s son, carried on the family tradition of handcrafting fine cigars in the family's cigar factory, Tabacalera Las Lavas. Today, Luis Sr. is joined by his son, Luis Jr., in the manufacturing and sale premium long filler cigars. So check out Casa Cuevas Cigars at www.casacuevascigars.com and on their Instagram and Facebook channels. And today's show is brought to you by Perilous, a game of ultimate cigar trivia, where contestants compete to win prizes and gift certificates to purchase their favorite products. You can join Perilous by going to stogiepress.com slash Perilous and register to be a contestant. All right, let's bring in Coleman. And don't forget, if you haven't registered for Perilous, we're still building the slate of contestants. Get out there, register, stogiepress.com slash Perilous. There'll be a register button there. You can get all the information you need to know about the game show. But now let's spotlight my good friend, Coleman Fine. Meanwhile, I hope everybody's having a fantastic uh, uh, Wednesday. Uh, it's not always I do a Wednesday show, so it's always fun to do a Wednesday. I just got done doing some martial arts, so I'm all kind of loosened up and uh, ready to roll. Uh, Coleman, welcome to Taking It to the Nub. What's up, Jimmy? What's going on, man? Sorry, good, I, was sharing, I was sharing the post on a couple of groups. That's okay. That's okay. You can continue to do that if you want. <laughs> Uh, I was just telling the t telling the, the viewers now and in the future that you know it's brutally hot here right now in Florida. Uh, the, the temperature is going up. It's May. Um, this is what happens. Uh, so uh, the garage door is closed. The AC is on, and I'm smoking an El Burro Corojo. Oh, that's what's up, man. Which is probably one of my favorite in this line, and at the price point, you cannot go wrong on this cigar. I don't know how you do it, but you're making a cigar that is what is it, seven dollars? It's less than six, or I'm sorry, it's less than seven. So the Robustos retail for five seventy, I believe. Toros retail five, for seven. I think six oh five, and the Presidente is a seven by sixty, and that retails for. We just had a price increase two months ago, so I want to say it's like six dollars and seventy five cents, I think, for a Presidente. What's up with that? 
Ah, yeah, it's dude, crazy, dude. bro. And, and what's what's crazy, Jimmy, is I tell people is don't be fooled by that price point. That's that's our value brand. And although that cigar is you know inexpensive, um, it's still a grade A wrapper. It's still it's still premium, all, all long filler premium tobacco. Um, we kept the we kept the price point low by doing inexpensive bands, inexpensive boxes. But more importantly, our, our margins on those are very low. So, for example, I sell a box to a, to a retailer. We make maybe 20 to 25 hours a box on those. It's kind of like a thank you to consumers and retailers. So kind of like, um, who was it? Matt Booth did the, did the, uh, the big payback. Payback. He, yeah, yeah. So it's something like that. So it, it, we just we wanted to come out with a really, really good cigar where people could just go in and grab a handful of them. And, and not break the bank, you know. I was just at a cigar shop um, the other day here locally in Pittsburgh, and I saw some guy walk up to the Sinistro humidor and just – he didn't know who I was, and I didn't know who he was, and I just watched him go in there and just take a handful of El Burroughs and then go to the register and pay. So that was our um, – that's what we wanted. We wanted people to grab a handful of those at a time, you know. Well, I, I think you hit, hit it out of the ballpark. Uh, you know, from value priced, and again, like you said, value price doesn't necessarily mean cheap quality. Right, right, uh, right. And in this case, it definitely doesn't. It's got a beautiful oily wrapper. Um, the burn on these have been very nice. I think I gave this one a while back, like a ninety-two. Yeah, yeah, I remember that, man. Thanks, brother. And it it it, it was a very very nice cigar. I still have I still have a Maduro and a Connecticut. I don't think I've ever reviewed the Connecticut, so I'm going to review the Connecticut yeah. uh, soon. I know I reviewed the Maduro. The, um, the actually, Maduro fun. came in a little bit less than the Corolla. This is just this is my jam. I like Corolla. Well, that's that's my partner and my. One of my best friends, James, that's his favorite, the Corojo. Mine's the Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big mm -hmm. Connecticut guy at all, but the Connecticut's my favorite. But, yeah, he, you hit it on the nail because that's James's favorite, too. He can't stop smoking them. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. uh, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're going on, like, 10 years now. Yeah. Um, having this company. And in all these years that I've known you, I guess I never actually paid attention to the word sinestro as far as what it really means. So I discovered, believe it or not, today, it means left, <laughs> to the left, right, to the left. All right, you have to give me a little deeper dive and everybody else on why to the left? What is why was that chosen as a name of the company? So James chose the name um, Sinistro, and like you said, it, it means left in Latin, and it kind of like it, it means kind of like what he was trying to. The purpose of the name is to to take a different path, to be different. You know what I mean? Um, so that's where he came up with the name Sinistro from. We get that we get that asked all the time, and then we've had people pronounce it sinestro or sinistro, um, but it we pronounce it sinistro. Sinistro. Okay. Yeah. So taking us taking the taking the alternate path, taking the path less traveled, right? That's kind of what it's about. And you you when you form this company, you forged a relationship early on with. La Aurora Cigars. How did you get connected in with La Aurora, Manuel, and all of them? So James and I, my partner, and again, good friend James, we're the two owners of Sinistro. Um, we both came from the retail end. I used to own a cigar lounge here in Pittsburgh. It was called Little Cuba. This is 10 years ago. I had it for about 10 months before I sold it. James had three lounges in California. He had two of the Cohiba lounges, and he had a Habana Vieja lounge out in California. I did a little, I did a decent amount of business with La Aurora prior to selling my, my cigar lounge, but James, James did a lot of business with La Aurora. Um, I, I believe La Aurora was one of his top selling brands in his three lounges. Um, so that's how it was really James that had the connection for La Aurora. He became real close friends with Manuel, you know, uh, you know, the master blender, um, and was traveling down there to go visit him and Guillermo Leon, the owner of La Aurora. And, James's house blend for those three lounges were made at La Aurora. Again, this is, mm. you know, 
a little over like uh, back in 2012. So another good thing about Laura, La Aurora, when a lot of our blends with them, they were allowing us access to a lot of their aged tobaccos because again, James did so much business with them and, and we would go down there, even, even me and James, we would go down there four or five, maybe six times a year. So we were really close with them, you know, and, and um, you know, they would give us, for example, our Habana Vieja cigar has a, it's an eight year aged wrapper from the plus it's a placentia eight year age wrapper that has also a 10 year age hva binder like it's you know they don't it's hard to get eight and 10 year age tobaccos but some of the stuff that we got from la aurora it does have a lot of age on it well mo most of the cigars i've had from you have been rock solid i mean in, in a good way you know what i mean um and i don't did you? I don't think you came out with anything this year, did you? Um, we came out uh, fiscal year or calendar year. You mean for 2024? Yeah. Or, so 2024, we didn't come out with any new brands, but we came out with three new sizes. So, for example, for the Mr. Desflorado that came out last year at PCA, we came out with what I'm smoking right now. This is the Perfecto. Uh, you can't really. It's a six by mm -hmm. six. It's a six by sixty Perfecto. So we came out with this. We only did 200 boxes, 20 count boxes. They retail for only $13 a cigar. And then we came out with um, the, the last Barbarian is also a double Perfecto. Again, six and a half by 56. So we came out with these two sizes at the trade show at PCA a couple months ago. And then also for El Burro, we have, it'll, it'll begin shipping in about a month or two. It's called Conica, which means cone. So it's the same blend. It's the El Burro blend, but it's um, it's a new mold that we had made. It's a it's a it starts at a thirty six or a thirty eight and it ends at a sixty. So it's kind of like a, it's like a cone. It's like the old that old Padron cigar, if you recall. So we have yeah. three new sizes coming out, but we do have a lot of new. We have probably like three or four new brands coming out this year, though. So like around July. Oh, so you got some new, some new blends, some yeah, new blends working are coming out. On. Yep. So James is at the factory in the Dominican right now. He's been there for about a week now. I leave to go there tomorrow night. I'll be there for about three weeks. So we're working on right now. We're working on. Um, so our most popular cigar is the Last Cowboy. So we're working wow. on a cigar called the Cowboy Caviar, and then we're gonna do a, a Last Cowboy Barber Pull, and then we're gonna do another cigar called uh, Mr. Sinistro. So we we have. We have a few um, projects in works right now. Mr. Sinistro is going to be part of Mr. White, Mr. Green, and those yep. guys. Yep, yep. So Mr. There's Mr. Black, Mr. White, Mr. Red, Mr. White Gold Edition, Mr. Candela, and then the Mr. Desolado, and then the newest one will be Mr. Mr. Sinistro. That'll probably be at, later in the year. So is that kind of putting a cap on the Mr. Blends? Once you get the Mr. Sinistro, he's yeah, like that. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Is there anything left? <laughs> a lot of our cigars, we're, we're working with El Artista, so you know they have Ram at El Artista has so many, so so many different types of tobacco, and he has a shit ton of tobacco. He sells to everybody. Every time I go there, I see crazy him. how yeah. much he has yeah. in that warehouse. He sells. You a walk lot. upstairs, and it's just. Rows and rows and bales and bales, as long as the eye can see. And, bro, that's only – I don't know how many of the factories you've been to. Bro, he has, like, that I've seen 10 factories that are just loaded mm. with bales of tobacco. Like, Well, he built that new that new place. Yeah. Right? Yep, yep, that, yep. that is filled with stuff. Yeah, man. It's fucking – you know, you got you to give that guy respect, man. They, him and his father, they do, they do well, man, you know. No, I love I love Ram. I love Ram Senior. Mm -hmm. um, you know, something special about walking into the the out parcel in the field across from the the, the the main building, and you go in there and it's got all the domino you know trophies up. All it runs the whole length and the yeah. perimeter of the whole the whole yeah. building, and they're all his father's trophies. I mean, yeah. does anybody, does it, the do people play, I always ask them that when people play your father, do they lose on purpose because it's, it's it was done wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, so are you talking about the, are you talking about what their, where their cigars are rolled? Or are you talking about their clubhouse across the street? The clubhouse, the clubhouse yeah. across the street. Okay. Yeah. Right? 
Yeah, there's like a <laughs> hundred trophies everywhere. You know, like you said, nobody for no nobody probably wants to beat his dad. If they're probably afraid uh-huh. to win, you know. Yeah, especially on his property when he has Ooh. the little tournaments going on in there. Right. <laughs> Which is like every night. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, so ten years. So ten years. So you were you, you were both retailers. You for a little bit. And you're very you know smart. You get out of the retail business and got even smarter and decided to go into the cigar making business. Um, did you see this going where it is now after ten years? Did you hit your goals or you? Did, how do you feel about where you are now? Oh man, it's funny you say that, Jimmy. Because yeah, I, I tell everybody like. We're just so lucky and, and so fortunate and blessed because, as you know, there's so many, you know, there's a lot of cigar companies that come out and they may, you know, t- for whatever reason, they may only last for maybe a couple of years. But we've been very, very lucky, very, very loyal and faithful um, customers. For example, I just did an event in Ohio two hours away on Saturday at Cigarro Lounge in Hubbard, Ohio. And I mean, I had like eight people drive an hour and a half from Pittsburgh where I'm from to, to go to the event. And they all bought boxes. I had people in Ohio. I knew that drove an, that drove an hour to go there and they bought boxes. And I did events in New Jersey last year and I had people driving two, three hours to come to my event. It, it, we're just very lucky and fortunate to have um, the loyal um, customer base that we have. And as far as the goals that we had, we, man, we, we've hit so many goals that we wanted to accomplish, for example, international distribution, which I haven't sent the press release out yet. I was supposed to send a press release out. We just got distribution in Canada. This is all within the last year. We've got distribution in Canada, Sweden, um, God, is Israel, uh, Norway, and we're working on a few other countries right now, like Australia, Lebanon. So uh, there's always more goals to meet, you know? Oh, but yeah, yeah. yeah. And then during during COVID, we saw a huge boom in um, cigar product. Or during COVID, we hit w- was our best year. Everybody was getting all the money from the government, and nobody had any. Every, nobody had anything to do. So that year, we we did really well. Um, the only the only setback, sounds. yeah, the only setback was maybe in the last year or two, um, we didn't have, we were back up. We were back ordered for like longer than we wanted to, but everything's caught up now. So. Everything's running smoothly now, but yeah, there's always always new goals to hit. And yes, I'm very very happy for where we're at, man. Thanks for asking, brother. Good, good. Now, when I look at your map, okay, of the United States and your retailers, I don't know if that's 100 percent up to date. If it's you got more things to put on there, but I, you know, I I notice some interesting pockets in there, right? You've got you know some things running across Central Florida. Not so much in South Florida. You have very little in North Florida. Like, so Jacksonville area has some, that whole area up there has got some ripe stuff. You got your your brother. Uh, um, Jim uh, Robinson? Jim, yeah, Jim Robinson's in St. Augustine now. Yeah, he brought our stuff in. So you, you so you have, so, so Sinestro Cigars are up in St. Augustine now with yeah. the Leaf and Yep. This is good to know because I travel up there to visit my grandchildren who live, they live right out south of south of Jacksonville. So there's an area up there called Fleming Island, and they have an island girl there. I've tried a lounge. So there's a lounge in 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 northern Florida, like the Jacksonville area. There's a shrimp Okay. I don't know if you heard me. It seemed like a, a small internet glitch there. But yeah, um, yeah it's a, a, a retail shop chain called Island Girl. There's one there in the place called Fleming Islands where my daughter lives. Really nice place. Keeps growing, getting better. Um, and then I also noticed that you, you've got a pretty good presence, obviously, in California. Mm-hmm. All right. You got a really good presence in Pennsylvania and Ohio. Um, New Jersey, little tiny bit in New York. That's always a tough market. Uh, a little bit in Boston. You, know, you got a little bit in. You got one. I think there's one in Massachusetts and a few in Rhode Island. But that that whole area there's got to be real tough to sell into now because of the pricing, the taxation, and all of that. 
Yeah, man. So, um, yeah, like you said, if you go on our website and you look, we're, we're in a little over 300 retailers now. Um, it's, it's, it's always up to date. Anytime we add a new location, I always have my, my web guy add them to the, to the, to the site. But like you said, some of the areas where we don't have a, a, a strong presence in are areas where we don't have, where we don't currently have sales reps. So for example, I have uh, Jeremy Wolfson. He does the North, he does, um, yeah, the Northwest. So he handles like Seattle and Washington, or was it Oregon and Washington, those states, like up in the Northwest. And then my partner, James, he handles California and Nevada and Arizona in New Mexico. And then um, my buddy, uh, Cigar, we, a new brokerage started. It's uh, Joel Resser, um, Bruce Henry, and um, Jared Jackson. They handle Texas, Louisiana, Oklahoma, Kansas, and I believe it's Idaho. And then Mark Weisenberg handles the Mid-Atlantic, which is Pennsylvania, Delaware, D.C., Maryland, Virginia, New Jersey. But we don't have anyone in the New England Territory. And we don't have anyone in the Southwest Territory, like you said, down in Florida. Those, Southeast those, territory, Southeast. Yeah, right. so so those retailers you see in uh, Central Florida were opened either at the trade show or they may have messaged us through through the website or, or social media. But if but like you said, we have a pretty strong presence. Obviously, California, where James at, Pennsylvania, where I'm from, the East Coast. So. I also noticed that there is a lot of, um, excuse me, for I, I, did, I did my own little analysis, well, just trying to remember how all about you and, and what you've been doing. And um, you, you have a lot of liquor stores that you've connected with. Now, are they carrying the whole line or are they carrying like the boroughs? You know, because I think of liquor store, I'm wondering, you know, they have full humidors and they have the yeah. desk, you know, the, the countertop ones. So that's a that's a good question. Um, if it's a if it it depends how it's set up in there. If they have a walk-in humidor, which a lot of them do, believe it or not, especially in California, if they have a walk-in humidor, we allow them access to uh, to almost all of our brands. But if they just have like a small cabinet humidor, we'll, we'll typically just sell them El Burros. Same with head shops, like like um, like those tobacco stores that sell vapes and in hookah and all that stuff. If they also sell cigars, we we sometimes limit them only to like El Burro, you know, we don't, you know, we're not going to put our high end, you know, our, our high end cord line stuff or our core line stuff in there, you know? Right. And, and that yeah, makes but, sense. But for example, like Mission Liquor in California, Vendome in California, they're liquor stores, they're huge liquor stores and they have a shit ton of cigars in there. And I mean, they order from us very frequently. I would say once every, every two months they order from us. Substantial, wow, size, yeah, substantial size orders too. It's a nice turnaround. Yeah, we got what we call total wine and spirits here in Florida. Okay, okay. And they've got a big humidor in it, and we also have another one called ABC. Mm -hmm. Um, and they also carry always had a humidor in there. So when I was, you know, years ago before we had the boom of like a shop every mile. <laughs> It was yeah. that was the places you went if you didn't weren't near a shop. Now basically you drive through the state of Florida and it's like, I mean, you can't drive like 10 miles without another shop showing up. And sometimes there's three or four within a you know uh, a four mile radius. Yeah. You know, it's Not crazy either. how much it is down here. And it's it's like Texas. It's there's, there's no taxes. It's cheap. It's like, you yeah. know. That's that's the same with Pennsylvania. So just like Florida, we have it's either a um, it there's no tobacco tax. It's either a seven or a six percent sales tax. Right. Yeah. So. And that's and that that just makes it reasonable, because right, I'm right, sure yeah. that this in New York, if this is selling in New York, is probably selling for twelve dollars. Oh yeah, man. New York. I think the tax is what seventy five percent there. It, it's crazy. I did three events last year and. One event was in Pennsylvania. These I did three events in three consecutive days. One event was in Pennsylvania. It was completely packed. The following day was in New Jersey. It was completely packed. You couldn't even sit in there. And then my final event was in New York. And it was a decent event, but it wasn't as crowded as, as the other two events. And I was talking to the manager. He's like, yeah, bro. He's like, we're, we're lucky to have, you know, the amount of people we have here. I didn't know the tax was 75. I never knew the tax was 75%. And I think... I think it's an additional thirty-five percent wholesale. What's that? 
75 percent whole on wholesale costs. yeah and then i think it's i think it's an additional nine cents for every dollar on top of that I, i'm not oh, sure oh it's nine percent sales tax oh absolutely in new york oh, city oh yeah nine yeah, percent sales man. tax so you're paying almost i was gonna say almost double for a cigar it's fucking nuts man. Yeah, i mean because they're because they're going to add it to the wholesale price and then the wholesale price is going to get double to the retail price and then you're going to pay 10 you're going to pay almost 10 percent on top of that in sales tax on the retail yeah so, bro another dollar like you said another dollar a dollar ten and just in, in in sales tax yeah that's crazy man it's yeah it's it's just the way things are going and yeah. unfortunately we we seem to still be buying cigars though yeah right, right. I, you know, I mean they're still selling cigars in california they're selling cigars in, and it's in stop people from buying cigars well, that's what's crazy if you think about it man there's only there's only what x amount of i mean a few I don't know how many cigar smokers. Let's just say I don't know. There's maybe ten thousand cigar smokers in America. I don't know. What do you? How many? Would two you think? percent. Two to three percent of the pop of the adult population. Okay, so you take. So, you so take, take two hundred million. Take two hundred million people, and take just do two percent of two hundred million. We got yes. four million people. Yeah. So you're you so you're taking that that small percentage of people that smoke cigars. It's not like beer where people are constantly going and buying left and right, but that that, that it's crazy to me. Like you said, there's only so many cigar smokers in our country, and yet they're they're buying so much to you know to re, to keep rewarding. I mean, to keep rewarding from all the all the manufacturers, and then to this day, there's still there's constant new blends coming out. There's constant yeah. uh, new brands popping, like new companies popping up. There's constantly new cigar lounges popping up. You know. I mean, there's a taste for it. I mean, you know, you think about the, the, the demographics, right? So it's no longer the stodgy old white man in a suit sitting in a shop, yeah. right? Now it's yeah. it's 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 a whole multi-generational, okay, and multi-demographic sitting in shops. You've the largest demographic is is the is the women smokers. Yeah. All right. Yeah. They they've that's the largest out there, and they're smoking the same thing we are. And I'm probably sound like a broken le record to some people because we talk about this quite often. Um, but that's big. And then you like you said, you got shops opening up. You got there are thousands of cigars in the market. No shop can carry everything. Nobody carries it all. So, yeah, man. It's, it's crazy. Like back, like you said, talking about Jim earlier. Do you recall the post he put on his Facebook? He's like, Hey, I'm I'm doing a soft opening here soon branch that i carry this is like a couple and he had so many messages i'm like oh man i wonder if he's gonna i wonder if he's gonna bring my stuff in because we do very well at his shop at, at the one in pittsburgh and and i was talking to jim he I was, and he's like hey come on we're bringing your stuff and i was like oh my god thank you bro he's like yeah dude your, your stuff does so good in pittsburgh he's like he's like i felt bad because there's so many people i just wasn't able to bring everyone's brands in yet jim's one of the coolest guys man you know it's oh man isn't he dude i've never met anyone like him man you know no, I, introduced, I, I introduced him to a few people. I, me, I remember I introduced him to Danny Vasquez. I don't know if you remember him. Um, he had the, remember the, Danny. Yeah, the oh, Danny. Part. Yeah, so I he, wish I wish he'd come back to the market and do oh, it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I was me. I was at an event for Sam Lucia's. This is God. Oh, this had to be like six or seven years ago. I was at a Sam Lucia event, and Jim was there. And then Danny also came up. So I was hanging out with Danny, and I was like, "Hey, Danny, let me introduce you to to Jim Robinson." I was like, "Hey, Jim." This is my buddy Danny. Hey, he just started his own cigar line or made out of La Aurora. It's called Voyager. He's like, Oh yeah, give me 10 boxes. Like, no questions asked. Didn't ask for <laughs> samples. Like, no bullshit. You know what I mean? He just said, give me 10 boxes right now. And he's done that a few times, man. He's just he's just one of a kind, man. That guy. Wow. That's <laughs> every dealing I've ever had with him has been spectacular, even on his most inebriated moment. <laughs> I've had great pleasure of having conversation with him. So, yeah. And his wife and his wife is just a gem. She is yeah. just amazing. Yeah, Melanie, Melanie, they're 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 both just one of a kind, man. And they're so humble. Yeah, like. They are humble. They, yeah. they, they that's exactly the way to describe them because mm -hmm. they they're they're just doing this really cool thing. And and just think about how he got on the map. Right. I mean, his his island gym number two, right, Jeez, one that has the pencil finish on it. 
that, like that cigar is like the most viewed cigar review on Stogie Press. Dude. Okay. I have over a million views on Stogie Press, and oh, his yeah. is the most viewed of any cigar out there. That Island Gym number two, which just tells me that people are searching for Island Gym number two, and they they come across my site and they open it up. But that that's a testament that people want it. But what really got him on the map, though, was the Leaf. When he connected with Oscar, and he put Oscar on the map. Think about it. Oscar was, he drove a, he, he drove a torch off. You know? Yeah, very nice. <laughs> You know, and, and and how they created the leaf and the reason for creating the leaf cigar, it, the whole story behind that was just unlike anything you've. It, it's you know I think of it as cigar lore, but it, it there's truth in it. You know where they wrapped it in a, in leaf to keep it from drying out when they brought him home because he was trying to learn his own things, and he says yeah just wrap it in this and you'll be fine. That's what we do. And, Boom, the leaf was it, born. And now it's it, in 50 states, I think. It's in all, every state in the United States. Yeah, man, it's it's crazy. Um, like you said, to, to have that idea to put that cigar inside a leaf like that was genius, but but also the cigar, all of them, what is it? There's the uh, Sumatra, the Maduro, the Connecticut. I mean, they're all so good. They're such good smokes, too. And, and you're in those Facebook groups like I am, you know, those cigar-related Facebook groups. Every day I see people posting his stuff, even from pe people all over the world. You know, it's crazy. I talked to Jim like maybe two years ago. And just the leaf by – I don't know if it was just the leaf by Oscar or if it's his whole portfolio together. He was making like – he told me he was up to like making like six million cigars a year. That That's crazy, man. How many do you make a year? We – um it it depends because we do a lot of – it depends if you're – if you, it depends if you're including – our brands but we also do a lot of lounge exclusives we do well, let's a lot just of talk um, your brands let's just talk sinestro mainline brands your brands how many of those do you make a year yeah we last year we did almost eight hundred thousand. we made almost eight hundred thousand cigars wow yeah and we're growing year over year we're growing typically 20 to 30 percent year over year are you having more fun being a brand owner than when you were running a shop? Oh, yeah, brother, because I tell everybody this. I had a real good job, man. I, I, I resigned from my job to to have more freedom. And I, when I resigned from my job, I opened the cigar lounge. And when I had my cigar lounge, I had no freedom. <laughs> I was there every day, all day. So that's why I sold it within 10 months. So I want to trade this for the world, man. Be, you know, being Being on the manufacturing side and meeting so many different people and traveling out. I, I love it, man. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm very fortunate to have my good buddy and James for me and him to work together like this. And, you know, we never have any issues. So we're, we're very lucky. So long as you have a trusted partner, life can be a lot easier. Mm -hmm. You know, right. let me take a, uh, our, our second commercial break. And when we come back, I want to talk a little bit about <laughs> the relationship between you and James. And um, specifically, um, kind of how you split the workload up, who does what, you know, yeah, I'm sure you do different things. And um, and we'll talk a little more uh, about how people can find your cigars. Awesome, bro. Sounds good, man. Okay. So with that, let's just uh, do a quick uh, commercial break here. And today's show is brought to you by... Bocock Brothers Cigars, a new and active brand founded by two Honduran brothers, Bryant and Douglas Bocock. The brand zeroes in on those folks that are looking for easy-to-smoke cigars inspired by unusual circumstances. Very importantly named after their very interesting and imitable last name, Bocock. Right now, Bocock Brothers is featuring their signature edition made at the A.J. Fernandez factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. It features an Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper, a Nicaraguan Habano binder, and a Nicaraguan filler. Available in three popular formats, a Robusto, a Toro, and a Gordo. You can check out Bocock Brothers Cigars at www.bocockbrothers.com. 
And today's show is brought to you by Platinum Nova Cigars. Platinum Nova is a family-owned and operated premium cigar company. Only the highest vintage tobacco and the most skilled hand workmanship go into the making of each Platinum Nova cigar. This results in a timeless blend of art and craftsmanship. The Nova brand and the family's work are a tribute and an honor to their grandfather to always remember him and his infinite passion for the finest cigars. Their love for cigars started with their grandfather, a dedicated master blender and entrepreneur in the cigar industry. So the next time you're looking for that exquisite cigar experience, pick up a Platinum Nova. You can check them out at Platinum Nova Cigars, www.novacigar.com, and on their Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter channels. And today's show is brought to you by All Saints Cigars, a company founded in 2019 and headed up by industry veteran Mickey Pegg and his two friends, Martin Corboy, a successful aunt restaurateur, and Frank Leo, an Air Force Academy graduate military veteran. As Mickey explains it, they were all sitting down talking and smoking cigars, and finally they decided that they would do this thing together. It was time. Mickey said, I decided if I'm going to work hard at it, it should be something I love. Besides, a tough day with a cigar is better than a great day doing anything else. Soon after, they began the process of launching All Saints Cigars, jokingly referring to themselves as the Holy Trinity, St. Michael, St. Martin, and St. Francis. They chose for their logo the Cross of St. James, the patron saint of Nicaragua, the country where their cigars would be produced. You can check out All Saints Cigars at www.allsaintscigars.com. One of my uh, local brothers of Leaf here, Lou Piscatelli, uh, asked a question, which I was about to ask in a different way, but he asks, uh, with limited shops, how do you differentiate yourself when you're trying to get into a new shop? And I would add to that, do you, uh, are you, do you, um, get into shops where like more easily with like something like La Aurora is carried as a line. Yeah, but that's, you know what, that's a good question, but you know, we, we never, when we go, when we open stores, we don't even mention, all we do is say is they're, they're made, you know, some of our cigars are made at La Aurora. We, they may not even know that, that our stuff's made there. We don't, we don't just come out and say it. If they ask, right. hey, where's your cigars made at? We'll say El Artista, La Aurora, um, you know, we use a, a smaller factory for one of our brands before the, the, the old butcher cigar. Um, but was the question when, how do we differentiate? So, when yeah. We're, how, we're, how, how do you differentiate yourself with, you know, cause there's only so many shops in this country and they can only carry so much. So how, how, how do you go into a shop that doesn't carry a line um, and break the ice and be able to get a Sinistro cigar line brought in. Um, you know, what is it about your cigar that you would say is better for the retailer than a cigar that's on the shelf? If they're looking, you know, they have, they have limited shelf space, you know, yeah. they, how do they, how do they put yours in and how do they reduce somebody else's if they don't have an, any more space? Yeah. Just like, I'm not I, so I I'm not I'm not a sales rep. I have sales reps that, that work for me. That you know I have sales reps, but I don't do that side of it. And and when but when I did do it before Mark joined us, um, you know obviously I would bring him in samples. But sometimes it sounds crazy. I would even I would even bring in our packaging. I think our packaging is beautiful. Um, another thing I would do. This sounds crazy, but rather than showing somebody our website. I show them our Instagram page. I'll, I'll, I'll just shuffle through all of our uh, Instagram pages, or I'm sorry, our Instagram pictures so that they can visually see photos of our cigars quickly. Um, but again, I, obviously I would bring them in samples too, but one thing I would, I used to love to do, I would bring in our boxes because I'd be like, check it out, man. Look how, look, look at the last cowboy box on, on your shelf here. And, would, and, yeah. and when you have the, the big last cowboy photo, the, you know, this, this picture right here on the inside of the lid, People, a lot of guys just ate that up, you know. So, um, right into it. yeah. Um, another, another 
Oh my God, man. I don't know if you, are you familiar with our Envy cigar, our high end Envy cigar? I am. Okay. Yeah. So that cigar there. Oh my God. The packaging's beautiful. We spent the boxes cost a lot of money. The, the bands cost a lot of money. We had the same company that printed the bands that does all the Opus X bands. I think they're out of, I think they're out of, um, somewhere in Europe. I want to say, um, not Norway. Oh, I, I forget, but it's the same company that does like the Cohiba bands, the, the Opus X and all those high end bands. So the presentation on those, when, when people would see the bands in the boxes, it, they'd be like, oh, I got to have that. You know, our, even the Havana Vieja, even our, you can't, you may not be able to see it, but the, the, the Mr. Desarada has like a real nice shiny pink gold. Mm -hmm. So we just try to think outside. We just try to, I guess it sounds so cliche, but we try to think outside the box, you know, what, what pops out, you know? So, so as a, as a brand owner and spending a certain amount of your time collectively, I'm sure coming up with the branding, um, the design and all of that, you make this beautiful band. <clears throat> I often wonder if you're sitting in a shop, you know, how, how do you feel when you're in a shop and somebody's smoking that cigar and they take the band off, they crush it up and they throw it away? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's was that, does it, I mean, <laughs> if, it was an, if it was an Alboro band, who cares? You know what I mean? But like an envy, an envy band, yeah, dude, it's like, fuck, man, you, you know, a lot of people make artwork out of them or whatever, you know. But well, that's, I, what, that's what my friend Lou does. He makes this beautiful cigar band art that he's been. Dude, yeah, been I know making. you're talking about. It. I've seen that. I've seen that. I think he's in yeah. that group, the ROCF group for Issues Cigars. Yes, I've yes, seen he is. That. That's pretty cool, man. He's got some amazing. He's he's amazing, and and that's not even his main job. That's just a little hobby on the side, um, kind of relaxes him, I guess. And I've watched him do it. You know, I've seen his stages of how he how he does it. And he did one of me right uh, years ago for like you know I don't know it was my birthday or something. I don't know, he, and he made one, and it came out. It's hanging on my wall, and I have a print of his one with the fifty seven Chevy. Um, it, it, I it it's amazing. And when people see it, until they, if they see it from a distance, it's like, okay, then you can, you get up close, you begin to realize every yeah. single color in there, everything is a cigar band or a piece of a cigar band yeah. that creates the color. So he has this eye, he's a cabinet maker, okay, he makes custom cabinetry and does a kind of renovation work like that, he's got his own shop here, <clears throat> but that's what he does as a hobby and it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. So real quick, Jim, I just want to show you the I want to show the guys watching here. Um, so this is the Envy Cigar. I'll, I'll let if, if nobody has seen this band, I'll just show it real yeah, quick. Yeah, let me here. spotlight you. Hold on. Let me, let me show, put let me you on spotlight box. here. Let me show the box first. Hold on. Even our Mr. White, even our Mr. White gold boxes are pretty cool. So it's just it looks like a gold bar. Here, let me turn this light on. It looks like a gold bar. This is the Mr. White Gold Edition. This is an eight tobacco blend. It has a Connecticut broadleaf Maduro wrapper. There's 30% Andouille tobacco in there. Um, the, so we just, the gold really pops out on these. It doesn't have the Sinistro logo in here because this is the first box we ever printed. I, I took this out of the factory. But I'm going to show you our um, Envy box. One moment. So here's our Envy box. And they're, they're pretty heavy, man. Is this backwards? Nope, looks fine. Okay, so here's our Envy band, or I'm sorry, our Envy box, and it opens oh. up like this. What? And then this has the cigar details on it. It has a 10-year age Corojo Maduro wrapper. And then when you go like this, the cigars should be in here, but this box, this particular box is empty. It sits in a fact, it sits in a, on a on a shelf like this, and it just looks fucking badass, bro. Wow. That's yeah. an expensive box. Oh my God. Yeah, dude. These boxes weren't cheap, man. And they're they're very heavy. They're pretty big. They're heavy. You can see, you know, how much yeah. is is involved in this at the at the wood factory, how how difficult these were to make. Give me one moment here. Yeah, and if, if anybody's never been to a box factory, um you you go to one sometimes and you'll understand the that the processes that build these and and these two like like the cigars we smoke most of these are all handmade 
boxes, mm -hmm. right. you know, machines, different machines, but there is like, like 25, 30 different stations that they mm -hmm. go through, starting with a piece of, a, a, a solid block of cedar, right? That they cut down into, into strips and then they cut and they plane and they, I mean, just, it's just an on a process that you walk through and it's an age old process that they've been using forever. And mm -hmm. At the end, they have these magnificent looking presentations. Now in yep. Canada, you can't have it. Yeah, I know, right? They gotta, like, like I would be, if I was a kid, so I wanna show you real quick our Envy band. In Canada, like you said, it would suck because they would have to cover this up, but this is our Envy cigar right here. Mm -hmm. People went crazy for this cigar. So I don't know if you could see all the detail, the gold. Hold nice. on, can you see like the gold, the gold, yeah. the gold sparkle in there? There's only one company that I know that could do it. It's the same company that makes, you know, the Opus X bands and all the Cohiba, Co Cu the Cuban Cohiba bands and stuff, the Atabay bands. Wow. So, yeah, that's our Envy right there, brother. Very nice. Yeah, but like you said, Very nice. to, to watch them make those boxes, all the work that's involved, it's it's crazy, man. And and they just they just crank these out, you know? I mm -hmm. mean, I was, I, I was hanging out with um, at Francisco Monte's 10th anniversary um down in down in dominican last year and they they connected with the box manufacturer that makes a lot of boxes for them plus many others and now they have a box factory connected right to the cigar factory yeah. it's all right there you know yeah, and right. it's a one-stop shop for them so oh yeah dude so let's get back to the question i wanted to bring up um with regard before we took the commercial break so two founders how do you split the work up? Who has the majority um, uh, responsibility for the key processes that are involved? You, um, you must split those up. Yeah, James James undoubtedly has 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 the majority of the workload. That's for sure. He goes, <laughs> he, he's he's in the Dominican way more than me, um, working on blends constantly. He's the one who does all the negotiating at the factories. The you know at the box factories, the cigar factories, the he does, you know, he, he deals with a lot of stuff, man. I don't know how he does it. Um, and at the same time, he handles, if you recall what I said earlier, he handles the state of the states of California, Nevada, New Mexico, and, um, and Arizona. He also, along with our manager at our warehouse, he also ships out product with, with our manager. His name's Hagup. You met, you probably met him at the booth in, um, at yeah. PCA. Younger yeah, kid. Yeah, I think I have. Yeah. Yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. So they, they do all the shipping. Um, what I do is I handle all e email inquiries and I handle all accounts from, from Texas to the East where we don't have physical representation. Um, I handle pretty much everything when it comes to the trade shows, you know, I'm the single point of contact whenever at TPE or PCA, I, I coordinate all the furniture being delivered. Um, the company that assembles and disassembles all of our furniture in the booth. Um, I do all the invoicing, um, and then we, again, I don't do I don't do a lot of the sales stuff. We're, the only time I do sales stuff is is where we don't, again where we don't have sales reps at. Um, so you chase the money down. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. I, guess, I do. I don't. Everybody pays their bills on time, so that's cool. But that's I also a good do all, thing. All, all of our social media on our Instagram and Facebook. Everything that's reshared, all those photos that are reshared or edited or stories or whatever. I do all that. Um, so yeah, but I would say James definitely, definitely has more responsibility than me. Uh, yeah. And then, and now do you have any online presence or are you just brick and mortar, pure so brick and mortar? We also have an online presence. So what I tell people, I get messages every day, all day, or people They'll either message my personal pages or, or the Sinistro page and say, hey, I, I may I, they may not have a, a, a Sinistro retailer local to them. So I'll just say, hey, man, if there's nobody local to you, first of all, go to our website, SinistroCigars.com, click on find a retailer. Hopefully there's a local retailer near you. If not, just go on go on Google, just Google Sinistro Cigars. You'll see a ton of online retailers. I mean, um, these are also physical shops that also have an online store. That's what I mean, right? So for example, like Mardo's, uh, Provada, Luxury, Cigar and Pipes, you know, Stogie Bird. I mean, there's there's so many out there. Um, You're not in CI, 
Are you? No, no um, we're a couple of the bigger companies where we're in best cigar prices. Um, mm -hmm. We're in talks right now with CI. They have um, they have a, a website that focuses only on boutique brands. It's called Sakaro, I think, a Sakara or Sakaro. Sakara. Sakara, yeah. So um, we 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 want we want to make sure that all of our ducks are in a row first, because like I said, we just opened up Sweden and Canada, and I mean they ordered you know between the two of them, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of cigars. So we want to make sure we don't want to get in over our head. You know what I mean? But yeah, we're in, we're in a few of the bigger retailers, but we're not on. Um, one thing that James and I want to do is we want to protect B and M. So we, we want to make sure that if somebody's going to carry our stuff, they're not going to discount it too heavily. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So that's one yeah, thing. Because that becomes a very difficult problem in this industry. Yeah. I've seen that a lot of times where a brand has, a, a, a huge presence in say CI and they'll somebody will go into a shop buy the cigar smoke it like it and buy the box of CI yeah and right. um but there are other brands that will make cigars that are only carried on CI right and the rest of the portfolio is only brick and mortar I've yeah, seen yeah, that model too. Right, right. Yeah, so even even Best Cigar Price, for example, they have a physical location. It's up in Bath, Pennsylvania. I was there what last year. Yeah, um, famous, famous smokers got yeah. that. Yep, yep. Are you in famous? No, Something we're we're not in famous smoke. No, not yet. Well, actually, one of the guys I forget. Ah, oh, he he's he he had an appointment with James at the trade show um, last year. Was it this year or last year? I can't remember because we get so we get so swamped at those trade shows. I can't remember, but um, so we did have a meeting with a buyer at, at at Famous. So we'll see if we get into there. And we've had other companies reach out to us. You know, I'm not going to say the, the company names. I mean, even in the Dominican, we've met up with some of the some of the you know the big dogs. But again, we just want to make sure that um our brand's protected and, and and sold online the right way. We got some comments coming in now. Maybe people have found it. Um, it says, uh, so Joe Verratti says, oh, snap, my man Coleman, enjoying the Habana VI as I watch. Oh, that's what's up. What's up, Joe? So, so earlier, Jimmy, if you recall, when I did, when I said, when I mentioned I did the Ohio event two hours away, he was one of the seven or eight guys that drove, you know, an hour and a half to, to come support me at my event. So. Joe, you're the man, brother. Thanks so much. I don't know why I'm not seeing his. I'm seeing some comments, but I'm not. I'm I'm seeing the comments on your page, so maybe I'll look on my Facebook page and see if I can see any of those comments because I don't want to miss anyone. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm watching on my page, and then uh, Gabriel G Gabriel Burbano says I Coleman is the Gabriel Burbano is the Coleman is the pretty face. Yeah, right. Yeah, in the dark, <laughs> I look good, but anyway. I see. So, Joe, I see your I see your your comment. Thanks, brother. Gabriel, I see your comment, bro. Thanks so much, man. Um, Adam DeBerry, I see him. The Desperado, Honcho, White Plato, and Honor Among Thieves, FTW, FTW, which means for the world, of course. And Chris Voltaire, he's down in Texas. He's a big underground guy down in Texas. So you're in the oh, underground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never met him. Yeah. I know who you're talking about, though. Yeah, he said he likes. He's a phenomenal. He's a phenomenal uh, brother of the leaf, mm -hmm. and, and and that shop is just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. I, just, I just absolutely love that shop. Whenever I'm in Fort Worth area, I'm always there. So yeah, oh yeah, man. I my, so, when I was, yeah. I just gotta make sure sometimes my dog comes out and starts barking. So I was just I was just shushing him away, you know. What kind of dog you got? A little chihuahua. Oh, they're they're snappy barkers, yes, they yeah. are. <laughs> he's, he's he's well friendly now, you know. Do you have, no, do you have any... I have a cocker span. Oh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, yeah he's you... uh nine years old and uh just a, a gem of a dog. He's the most yeah. loving dog in the world. Yeah, is he friendly towards people and dogs and cats? He and loves people. Um, cats are not in it; they're in his digestive tract if he can get it. Okay, yeah. he doesn't get along with cats, or at least we don't know because if he sees a cat in the neighborhood when we're walking him, 
he just like barks like crazy at it. Um, I don't know what would happen if he tussled with one. He tussled with a raccoon one night outside oh. in the patio, and that wasn't fun. Yeah, um, he, he, when it comes to dogs, like small dogs, dogs his size, he's pretty cool with. Big dogs, he thinks he's a big dog, and he he gets in their face, and these dogs just want to like play, right? And he's yeah. just like. You know, unless he knows the dogs, like my brother and my son, they've got they've got bigger dogs and they're fine together. Right. You know, the only difference is that when he shows up at your house, he'll go into the toy. If you got a toy box of toys for your dog, he'll go over to that toy box, take the toys out, corral them by him. And when the other dog comes over to touch one, he'll growl at him. Like, nope, he's a mine now. <laughs> I'm the guest. I'm yeah. like, you can't do that, you numbskull. You got to share the toys. They're not your toys. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, dogs are dogs. They yeah. get on, you know, if you let the dogs battle it out, they find, they, they, they're discovering, it's a, it's an alpha discovery, right? That's that's the thing about dogs. You know, my, it drives my wife, she gets very nervous when that happens. And I'm like going, they're going to growl. They might even snap at each other. But what's going to happen is one of them is going to back off and the other is going to say, okay, I'm okay. in charge. Right. You know? So they put, they'll put each other in their place eventually and somebody's going to rise to the to the top and the other one's going to be the submissive one. Mm -hmm. just, it's just nature. Yeah. You got to let it run its course. Yep. Chico, Chico's real friendly towards towards um people and cats but he doesn't get along with dogs hmm. no he's a little dog so a cat could probably destroy him <laughs> yeah and he and he hates cigar smoke i can't even smoke a cigar near him he'll like when my car if i'm driving he's always on my lap when i'm driving i can't smoke a cigar if he's sitting on my lap on the back porch i you know if i'm about to fire up a cigar he knows to just get off because he hates that i think his nose is just so sensitive you know well he does my my dog ziggy he, he, he he's He'll hang out in the lounge room. Right? He hangs out out here with me. And then when he gets tired, if it gets a little smoky now, especially with the door closed and rabbit ends on, it's still a little smoky. And he'll go, he'll just go over to the door and scratch and let him in the house with his with, with, with my wife. But yeah. <laughs> if I have a cigar and I just kind of, he's sitting right here, and I just kind of move the cigar over anywhere near him, the side of his mouth goes like this. Yeah. I know what you mean. Get that away from me. What are you, right. what, what are you nuts? <laughs> oh. So, but dogs are good. Got to have a dog. You know, yeah. dogs are important in life. You have a cat too, I, I take it? Or? Um, I have two cats. I just had to put one to sleep last month. She was like 17 oh, years old. And then three years ago, I had to put another cat to sleep. She was, she was like 18 years old. I'm a big animal lover. Every day I feed, I go to the store and buy food for all the different birds and squirrels and chipmunks and where I live at, man, if you come in my backyard, you'll see every different type of bird and random animals like possums and raccoons and skunks just eating my food. You know, I, I love it, though. Yeah, I get I get raccoons once in a while. I get possums. Possums are just fun animals. I mean, they're, they're, they're just nasty looking animals, you know, with their beady eyes and stuff. But what I love is when they're on the fence line at night. Sometimes my dog runs out there at night, which I don't always let him out at night because you never know what kind of snake he's gonna find. And he um and there's a possum on the fence. He just stood, he'll sit there and bark, bark, bark. And he has a certain bark when he when there's something on the fence line. You know he's barking at something yeah. there. So you go out there with a flashlight, you look up, and there's the possum. You know, possums, they just play dead. <laughs> they're just yeah. like Things and it's, it, 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 it's not moving. You know, it's a big, long tail, and nothing's moving. It's just kind of, I'm not here. Don't come near me. <laughs> Bro, did you ever see those videos of people with raccoons as pets? I, I'm mm -hmm. so afraid of raccoons. Like, I don't know where they get these raccoons that are friendly like that, where you can, you know, rub their belly and kiss them and stuff. Because where I live at in Pittsburgh, man, if you go near a raccoon, they will they will destroy you. They're not afraid of anything, you know? I don't like raccoons. That yeah, I know what you're talking about. Those videos are there, all these cute videos, but 
I remember decades ago, I was living in Massachusetts and I had a basement apartment and I would come out at night, and, you know, during the good weather and just sit on a chair with a pinch or two of whiskey and nice night out smoking a cigar. And I was sitting there one night just kind of gazing up at the stars because it was like, it was like a starry night. I was just looking up at the stars and I kind of looked back down and there are three raccoons, big guys, about four feet away from me, just looking at me. Yeah. Wow. And I'm like, bro, ah, uh, go away. Yeah, I would have a heart attack. <laughs> so no, I'm not a I'm not a raccoon fan. Yeah. Possum fan, my wife can't stand them, but I'm like, hey, the possums are kind of cool, you know, and I guess they're edible because people eat, eat, eat possum. Yeah. I never eat a possum. Uh, I see a couple of comments. Patrick, what's up, brother? Patrick's out of California. He goes, he's a good, um, I've never met him either. Don't worry, Patrick, we'll meet one day. He goes and uh, he's a big Sinistro guy. He smokes a lot of our cigars out in Lodi. I think it's called Lodi or Lodi, California. The place Lodi. Is called yeah. And then my buddy Gabriel said, when will Mr. Raccoon Cigar come out? It'll be there we go. Bro, yeah. <laughs> now, you mentioned, go back to the limited and all that. So, so you've got your main line, and you make some limited ones. And then you have, um, you mentioned you also do, I guess, private labels or, or shop shop only cigars. How many of those do you have? You have a lot of shops that do that with you, a percentage, 10%, 5%? I'd say probably around 10%. For example, that guy, Patrick, just commented, that cigar shop that he goes to, Stogie's Lounge in Lodi, we, we, do a, we do a private, we do their house blend for them. Yeah. Um, now, you know, that, that's that's the lounge exclusive stuff we do, but, but when we do like our limited edition stuff, for example, are you familiar with our La Fabrica? Remember all the La Fabrica stuff we were doing like uh, during COVID? Mm -hmm. so during so during that time we we started la fabrica to kind of like because there weren't a lot of rollers at the factory so we couldn't get core line stuff made so we or we couldn't get a high volume of core line stuff made so we would we would do a lot of like small runs like 1500 cigars of each brand so we did like um god there was so many we did we did barbaroja we did the quaker we did no entiendo love child two versions of no entiendo two different versions of love child we did the butcher one and two we we did um oh my god there were so many and we only released like 1500 to 3000 of each cigar i mean they're all, they're all sold out but um we did we we did like small run stuff to kind of like help sustain us through the through the pandemic because we couldn't you know when we order last cowboys for example we order a shit ton of them and the factory didn't have the the the, the rollers to be able to keep up with that but also during that time that's when james was in a factory down in dominican for like 8 months so he was just blending a bunch of different cigars. And so um, there's a lot of other limited edition stuff that, 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 that came out. Like we had the, the we had the um, Lancero sampler pack. It had four Mr. Red Lanceros, four Mr. White Lanceros, and four Mr. Black Lanceros in it. It was a 12-count box. Those aren't available anymore. Those all sold out. We have the Destro, which is also – it's, it's kind of like – it's like the same size as like the little um, – what do they call it? The Flying Pigs from Jewish State. So we had four Mr. White, four Mr. Red, four Mr. Black. Um, oh man, we had we we did a lot of we did a lot of exclusive stuff for Pravada Cigar Club, a lot of exclusive stuff for uh, Luxury Cigar Club. God, for we've we've done a lot, man, and we're still we're what, working on when we. What's that? What 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 does it feel like when you see somebody, one of your fans, somebody you're going through your Instagram feeds or Facebook feeds, and you see somebody post one of those limited cigars that you know hasn't been around for two years let's say what yeah. goes through your mind it's like yeah, it, wow you, you still got one of those <laughs> yeah, crazy, dude. yeah man i'm like holy shit um i was at i was at there's a there's a rocky patel burn lounge here in pittsburgh i was there this past yeah, saturday I've been there some yeah. guy that i've never met before i know who he is but we've never met in person he walks in he, he noticed me because i had my sinistro hat on he's like Hey bro, it's nice to meet you. Look what I'm smoking. He was smoke. He was smoking the Barbaroja, and then he in his pocket he pulled out a five pack, and he had the Barbaroja. I was like, holy shit, bro. We haven't. Those are like three years old, and 
that he didn't know I was going to be there. And I didn't know he was going to be there. And, and, and when he walked in smoking, I was like blown away. You know what I mean? But like you said, when I see people smoking it online, I'm like, holy, holy shit. I wish I want one of those, you know, because I've smoked through all of them. And you ain't got them, right? I mean, that's, that, that's what I was saying. You know, it's a, you got to be some things that you don't have that somebody else has. You know, And it's like, like you said, it's like three years old. It's like, can we smoke one together? Because I like to know what it tastes like after three years. <laughs> yep. And like Gabriel just commented, Gabriel has a lot. There's a bunch of guys that they are just huge Sinistro guys, like Gabriel Barbano, Austin Sang. I mean, it's just those two just stick out. Because I know um, I just saw a post from Gabriel in, a diff in that Leaf Mob group that that him and Austin did a trade where Gabe did send him a whole bunch of like very rare Sinistro stuff, like, like um, pre-release last Cowboys, the honor among thieves Scala, which you only did for one club. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool to see that, man. Now I'll ask this question. So on this Corojo, I now remember why I love this cigar. Um, Almond. Right um, in the end, the end of the second third into the final, there is just this magnificent almond note coming in, you know, almost like almondine, like the look, right? It's just that it coats the palate, and you can just it lingers afterwards. You're like, oh, mm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's those type of cigars that get me old jammy. You know, I'm like, going, oh, you know, you give me a cigar that has, you know, a lot of cigars have the very similar flavors. It'd be spicy, you know, cocoa, coffee, you know, the standard things, the woody, the cedar, and, you know, sweetness. But when you get something like the almond that comes in, you know, suddenly you perk up, you're like going, mmm. I mean, I don't want that in the whole cigar because it would be boring. But when it kicks in, you're like, ah, oh, that's like a dessert right at the end of this cigar. Yeah, man. I'm telling you, Jimmy, you said you haven't smoked the Connecticut Borough yet. You said, I think I gave you one at the at the trade show, right? The one right here. Yeah, bro. I'm telling you, that's my favorite. So on that one, believe it or not, you know, the, the Maduro, the Corojo, and the Connecticut, they're all three the same blend. They just have a different wrapper. Right. But the Connecticut, to me, when you smoke it, I don't know, message me and let me know whenever you do smoke it. It has a lot of, it's crazy because it's Connecticut wrapper, but it has a lot of undertones of like rural, rural dark chocolate. I don't know. That's mm. what I get. You know, mm. All yeah. right. Well, don't 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 taint my mind too much, but I'll yeah. you know, I'll I'll let my palate talk. But yeah, I mean, the dark chocolates are always good in the cigars, um, and Connecticut's a good you know, a good Connecticut for me is one that doesn't have an exhaustive bitterness to it because Connecticut's can be bitter, but if you don't have some other components that are working with that, like you know, bitter and dark chocolate, I'm good with that. Right. Because I expect, you know, I start to describe it as like, I'll even say it in, in a review that this guy like an 80 percent dark chocolate. And some people go, what the fuck are you talking about? I said, you ever eat dark chocolate? You ever go to the store and you look at the line of dark chocolate, the good shit. Right. And you're like, it's 70 percent, 80, you know, 75. You know, I get like the 80 percent dark chocolate. And my wife actually takes that now and shaves it up and puts it in. And she makes a um, granola oat thing that I have for breakfast sometimes where she shaves it and puts it in with the oats. And then you just take that and you pour milk in it <laughs> and you eat the, oh and you God. eat that. And at the end, what's left over ends up being chocolate milk. <laughs> and I'm just like, you got to make more of this for me. Cause this is like phenomenal in the morning. Right, just yeah. with a cup of coffee and a cigar. Well, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. I, always, I always stick to the 70% cocoa. When you buy those real good chocolate, um, where yeah, yeah. Chocolate. I like anything above like seven. I can't go above seventy. I tried ninety before. I was like, holy shit, it was just too bitter. Ninety's yeah. tough. Ninety's too yeah. bitter. Eighty for me is good, um, but if it's bitter, bitter, it's just like it's going to lose points on that. So you know, sometimes people go, "How come you took a point off for this guy that was bitter and the other one what you had bitter and you didn't take a point off?" I'm like, "Oh, because it was mixed in with this other cool stuff where that makes sense." It's balanced. The bitter and the chocolate make sense, right? If it's just bitter, it, it's just like, you know, no. You know, same thing with sour, right? Sometimes you get sour notes, and sometimes you get sour with a cherry, right? Or sour or sour orange, right? That's okay. But sometimes it's just sour. And you're just like, yeah. oh, I don't know what hey, you did to this cigar, but... <laughs> 
That reminds me at the trade show. Did you have the Mr. Desperado? That's that's Desperado, Connecticut. Did I give you one of those? If not, I'll send you a couple. No, I did not have that. Oh no. my god. So so we we connected like twice. You were busy. <laughs> yeah. And I bounced back and you were busy. We had a brief conversation and, and we talked about the game show for a little bit there. And then, oh, yeah. uh, and then and then we had to move on, which is which is slowly coming together. It's not yeah. doing it's it's not getting the slated contestants as quickly as I thought it would. I thought getting contestants would be simple. No, nah, it's very difficult. People don't want to. I think there's there's a potential ego involvement here where people don't want to not get something right. You know, uh, I feel like they don't know something. Um, so I'm trying to explain to people that it's not just about knowing things because nobody knows everything. And I can guarantee you nobody's getting all the answers to all the questions that would be on that show. Mm -hmm. All right. Don't expect that. But there is a strategy, I told him. And if you understand the strategy of the game, you'll understand why it's called perilous because you got to climb this mountain and you got to know when to bet points, when not to bet heavy because you might, there's a category that you may not be familiar with. Okay. So we're talking legal in a category and it's a level three style set of questions. So it's a, a more difficult question. You might know nothing about legal in the cigar industry. You're probably not going to bet points on that and you shouldn't. OK, if the other person thinks they know everything and they get that, they're going to lose points. And now suddenly you move ahead of them. So that's the strategy. And if you learn that, that's what makes the game fun. And the game is fun for them to play. But it's also fun for people to watch because they're going to learn something. All right. But I don't have a slate of contestants yet. So we're just letting it dribble in. And then eventually we'll get this thing launched. And I'll reach out yeah. to people again and explain, OK, remember what I was talking about? All right, now all that pledging and stuff that we talked about with, you know, swag and all it is, now it's time to pony up and say, okay, who's on board with this? Because yeah. we're going to launch. Okay, and I'll, you know, about a month ahead of time, I'll get the launch date out, and then we'll, we'll make it happen. Oh, so. yeah. It'll be better. Now, you also, do, you also do some philanthropy, okay? I think you did some work with Cigars for Warriors, if I'm not mistaken. We we've donated to a few that James handles that side of it. We've donated to a few. Um, yeah, we've we've sent cigars or cigars for warriors in the past, and I think um, oh, what's there's another one. Oh my god, I can't remember. But, but yeah, we've we've donated we've we've donated a lot of cigars in the past. Yeah. Okay. So do you have? So you don't have a specific charity other than that that like you guys are like tuned into and want to give back to a certain community of people. Um, personally, me, I, I on the personal side, I I, I give to um St. Jude's. I, I get I have like piles and piles of the return labels they send me, and they give me shirts and all that. But I I, I every month I give um to St. Jude's, and I was giving to animal what's the animal rescue one but i stopped that like maybe a, i don't know maybe okay. a couple years ago i donate to animals in other ways like i said earlier i feed all i feed all the animals around here i just had three pets so i but yeah we i don't know if james does on the personal side i'm not sure yeah i do i do uh autism oh that's cool um and say and saint jude's i, yeah. I I've, I've donated money to saint jude's and my my yeah. daughter was a uh in a tri-delt fraternity a sorority, I mean, mm -hmm. and uh, their their charity was St. Jude's. So I got introduced early on to St. Jude's through her, and oh, um, cool. you know, and it's they they just do amazing work. I mean, it's yeah. just you know, if you got children and your children are healthy, count your blessings. Yeah. Okay, because there are children out there that aren't healthy and they need that kind of help, and that stuff is not cheap. You yeah. Know? Well, so yeah. any help that can go. Yep. Um, so, so we're coming up on the hour 20 moment here. Um, let's, uh, let's shift the gears a little bit and talk a little bit about Coleman Fine, the human being. Okay. Um, we know you, you like animals. Um, what you, you into sports? Um, I used, I used to watch sports all the time when I was a teenager, but I really don't watch sports too much anymore. All I watch is, all I watch is the news Seinfeld, Impractical Jokers in the Office. Those are like the four. That's all I really watch. 
Seinfeld, Impractical Jokers, The Office. When Michael, when Steve, when Steve Carell was in it, and then of course, yep. um, and then of course, Steve Carell was just on the Colbert Show. The yeah, I saw night. that. Yeah, he was. A, that was that was a fun. That was a fun interview. That discussion that they had because they they brought back some old stuff. That was that was neat to hear hear them have that conversation. That dude's hilarious, man. <laughs> it's um movies you watching any movies or streaming anything fun these days oh man i the only movies i i don't really try to watch i don't really watch new movies i watch the same movies over and over like but i think i have ocd i watch the same movies like hundreds of times like i've watched blood sport probably probably this might sound crazy man but when i would lay in bed up until about a year ago, for two years straight, I would watch Bloodsport every night over and over and over again for literally two years straight. I swear to God. You ever see that movie, Bloodsport? Yes, but I would not be watching that movie every Dude, night. Dude, I would like, I would critique it. Like, I would pause the video and I would I would catch so many so many loopholes in the movie or so many bloopers or, um, you know, some of my favorite movies. I love Godfather 1, Godfather 2, Gangs in New York, The Departed. I've seen The Departed a million times. I love that movie. Which you good probably fellas, know. Goodfellas, Goodfellas are probably in that list. But The Departed, I'm sure you've seen it. Aren't you? You're from Boston originally, so I'm sure you've seen. Uh, New York, but I just oh. watched Departed. I just watched that the other day. I was yeah. watching it. It was on TV. I think it was on AMC. Yeah, and then a, this yeah. afternoon, I was just sitting around doing nothing, flipping through the channels, and I caught I caught up with um, um, Bronx Tale again, which is just. I don't think I've ever watched a Bronx Tale from front to back. For whatever reason, I've always catch it somewhere in the movie. And I'm just like riveted by it. Just like, yeah. I'm just got to watch this movie. <laughs> hey, did you ever watch Minority Report? Yes. Yeah, with Tom Cruise. That's a good one. Vanilla yeah, well, Sky. Almost with... anything. I see Joe's comment. He watched the Care Bears movie a bunch too. I heard he's off the hook. <laughs> um, Dude, my two favorite actors are, are Leonardo DiCaprio. So almost any movie he's in is I love. And then Tom Cruise. I love Tom Cruise, man. Especially old, like, especially like in the late '90s, early 2000s. Hey, that reminds me. Did you ever reminds me? Did you ever see one of the first Tom Cruise movies ever? I think it came out in 1984. It's called Legend. It's called Legend. He like, it takes place like it's like a fantasy movie, and he has to fight the devil. At the end of the movie, this big devil, he's like mm. fucking eight feet tall. Oh, you see that? I don't oh, you think gotta see that movie. Did you did you ever see um did you ever see Big Trouble in Little China? That's not familiar. What you never saw Big Trouble in Little China? No. Come on, dude. You're... Oh, I see Angela. What's up, Angela? Yeah, Vanilla Sky and, and Legend were good. Um yeah, Tim Curry plays devil. But I'm telling Tim Curry. You, yeah, Tim Curry. I love that. He yes, plays I love role. Tim Curry. I'm telling you, man, you have to watch. It's called Legend with Tom Cruise. And then another one, if you have never seen it, it's called Big Trouble in Little China with Kurt Russell. That movie will blow your mind. You know, the, remember that Remember that video game, Mortal Kombat? Yes. Raiden, Raiden was ba- – the, 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 the character in that video game, Raiden, was based off of one of the characters in Big Trouble in Little China. The movie came out in like 86 or 87. Yeah, now yes. every time I anytime I watch a movie that was Tim Curry's in, I, I'm a huge rock or Rocky Horror Picture Show fan. Yeah. And I just can't get it can't get out of my head the sweet transvestite from transsexual Pennsylvania. I just can't get that visual because he did yeah. that so well mm-hmm. in that in that cult movie that and I've seen that movie dozens of times. And I just like every time I watch anything with Tim Curry, I, I, I kind of like whatever character he's in, I still see that. <laughs> it's hey, remember him in Home Alone 2? Which one? Well, Home remember Alone 2, yes. He was funny in there. Mm-hmm. Patrick said, I just huh. binge watched all the Mission Impossible. Yeah, those are those are good movies, man. Mission Impossibles. Some of the movies are so, so far fetched, like. Like Jack Reacher and all that shit, like man, or John Wick, like they kill like ten thousand people and they never, you know what I mean? I can't get I like I, I I like the Wick movies, um, mainly because I I, I like Keanu Reeves, but you know, 
but again, that's another one. When I watch him, even in Wick, I kind of think of him in the Matrix. Yeah, Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll never, Because yeah, that it's like, right. he, he, he made a name for himself in that and it did such a great job. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of, they typecast you in there and then suddenly it's like, I don't know, you know does Yeah, he play man. anything? Is he better than anything else? Yeah. Yeah. I do also like watching like Turner movie classics. I like to watch the old 1930s movies. Because when you watch when you watch these movies that are like hundred years old, literally we're in we're at a point in time in our life now when talkies, early talkies, they're a hundred years old. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Right? I mean, it's it's crazy. When I was a kid, they you know wasn't on you know they like you know nineteen sixties. They were like you know thirty forty years old. Right now you're getting into these are getting to be a hundred years old, and the stories. that are being told are timeless Mm -hmm. stories because it, you can just take that and put that in today and the same crap is going on in the world today that was going on a hundred years ago the same crazy stupid stuff these movies are written about they just kind of repeat generation after generation as they go on So I just watch these and just kind of get a historical reference to going, you yeah, know, this is the same as it was. So why am I going to worry about life? Because <laughs> obviously it hasn't changed. Yeah. You got to watch something. You, you, know, you know what movies I like to watch too that kind of like going back like what you were just saying? Those movies from the 70s and 80s, man, like 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 Taxi Driver. It seemed so real. There were no special effects. There was no like crazy makeup or outfits. You know what I mean? Like every everything like the Dirty Harry movies, man. They, um even The Godfather, you know, those movies from the 70s and 80s, man, like they I love those cuz like You know, again, there's no like crazy special effects, the shit that doesn't look real. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. But, um, but I'm also a big sci-fi guy, so I love sci-fi. I was I was a big Star Trek fan in the show itself, the original, when I was a kid, and then I obviously enjoyed all the Star Trek movies, all the Star Wars movies. I enjoyed those. I never got into Doom. All right, even Which the one? new Doom, Doom, the movie Dune. Uh, I never, I never saw those either. Oh, yeah. The movie Dune, it's a sci-fi type movie. I never could watch that movie completely. It bored the hell out of me. And there are people like, it's a cult favorite. And they just redid it as a new Dune series out and all of that. And I'm just like, I don't get it. And it just Yeah. never got it. But other people are like, oh, are you crazy? This is like a gem. This is amazing. And you know? I'm like, not my jam. Just Mm -hmm. don't, don't work for me. It's kind of like this cigar, not my jam. Yeah. See, Joe said Tarantino films. I liked a few of his films. I remember um who was the one Not gonna... <laughs> oh, Pulp Fic, Pulp Fiction, man, Pulp all day Fiction, long. yeah. And what was the one? I think it was Once Upon a Time in Mexico. Was that was that that was Quentin Tarantino? That was a good one. Oh my God, that's an amazing Yeah. movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. yeah, Tarantino has got a deep side that just is it, it, what he does. Nobody else does, you know, the way it's filming it, the way the film is made, it, you could tell it's a Tarantino movie. It's got Yeah, a he's signature look, feel, sound to the movie. crazy. Yeah. So. Mm hmm Yeah. I don't know, man. It might be it's it's not really a chick chick flick, but you got if you if you haven't seen Vanilla Sky, you gotta see Vanilla Sky, man. It's like one of them, it's one of the movies you where you may have to watch it twice or even three times to fully understand it, like Vanilla Sky with Tom Cruise and Cameron Diaz. It, it's it's creepy, man. I think It's I've seen that. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. I'm trying to look at these calls. Oh, Twi I never saw Twilight Zone, Angela. No. <laughs> Twilight Zone, I can't, you know what I do with Twilight Zone? So Twilight Zone, when I'm up at night and I don't want to go on a Zoom with a bunch of people and I just want to sit here in total solitude, smoke a cigar and relax, I go through my the Facebook videos that pop up, you know, And I'll go through old TV shows and like 
six months ago, there was just this constant feed for whatever reason. I must have clicked what one or two of them that I watched and it said, oh, you like these. Let me just keep giving you these. And yeah. I was watching all the Twilight Zone episodes. All right. And I was a kid. That was a big thing for me. I loved the Twilight. I thought that was in. I just enjoyed the crap out of Twilight Zone. Um, always because at the end, there was the that final thing where. Oh, that's like the best the best one ever that I feel was the was one where they um the aliens came and everybody was freaking out at first and then they were inviting um the humans to join them to their planet to show them how they can live better and blah 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 bum or that was a whole stage of of the script. But there was a group of scientists that were trying to decipher a book. That they were given it was not written in english it was written in their language and they're trying to decipher it and when they at the end of the show they and as people are getting on these spaceships to leave earth right the book says the name of the book is to serve man it's a cookbook <laughs> Get out of here. are you serious <laughs> that's funny man that was the zing at the very yeah. end of that episode was yeah. it's a cookbook and they're trying to run it's out and get people not to get on the spaceships because they're taking them like yeah. cattle to bring them to their planet so they can serve man like you serve beef. <laughs> Good food is the is the key to a man's heart, you know? That's it. <laughs> so yeah, so Twilight Zone for sure. Um, how to serve man. Okay, thank you, Joe. You're better than I am in remembering things, but yes, how to serve man. That's what it was called. How to serve man. So, and Angela says, "How I've watched all episodes of Twilight Zone. I feel like it's so cool. It, it, it and it is, you know. And and I I watch those, and I watch. Um, I, I I like to watch Gilligan's Island." Oh wow! Right. How about, how about was... Miami Vice? Huh? How about Miami Vice? Remember Miami Vice? Oh yeah! I'll, yeah. I'll tell you. You know, it's funny. My um, a very dear friend of mine from college, she um, she lives in Florida, but she has a place in New York too. And she was up there for her sixty first, sixty second birthday. She was up in New York visiting some friends, and in this restaurant, all right. And she sends me a picture. And there's her and her girlfriend at this restaurant table and hovered over the top of them where he took a picture was was Don Johnson was there. Oh, get out of here, and he, man. And he wow. came over and he took a picture with them and said he was very nice and very kind. And yeah, so I asked her about him. He's like, I'll, Yeah, he just came walking over and said hi and they yeah. took a took a selfie with him. And I was like, well, I'm cool with that. What's up? And he, for What's 72 up, years old, he's 72 or 70, 74 years old. He's like 10 years older than I am. And that man looks good. Yeah, yeah, man. It's crazy. All the chicks still love him. They he's still got the face is perfect. You know, yeah, it's crazy. He's got, he's got similar cheekbones to mine, almost a similar smile. He's yeah, got he the crow, the, the perfect crow's feet, but he's got yeah. a nice jawline. <laughs> He got the he got the perfect jawline like a heart, you know. What I mean, it sounds weird, but bro, I know That's... every word to every episode of Miami Vice. I have all the DVDs. Some of them are still sealed. I have all the all. The... Bro, I named the Honor Among Thieves cigar after a Miami Vice episode. That's my favorite show ever, man. Do you have a? So you must love exotic cars. I like luxury cars, man. I like like I've okay. had I've had. Six Cadillacs, four of them were low riders. I have a Lincoln Continental, um, Lincoln Continental now, but I like luxury vehicles. I do hold on, real quick. I see Anthony, two year one Lazona Palooza alumni, aka party crashes. I love you both. Oh, uh, you know, you know, Anthony Rossisi, he's hilarious, man. Yeah, yeah. Anthony, absolutely. Lazona Palooza, yes. How you doing, Anthony? So, so me and Anthony, we went to Lazona, you know, Eric Espinosa's Lazona Palooza mm -hmm. about six years ago, and Bro, that, Bro. <laughs> Anthony had me laughing so hard. He's fucking nuts, man. Like, the shit he... And we roomed together, too. 
so so the rooming together part was you know it was iffy but when we would go out and, and hang out man he was he was a trip man he was hilarious so shout out anthony what's up brother what's up drew what's going on my man you know drew drew has his own cigar brand now it's called uh i do El, i just El reviewed Gato. his oh no what's it called um is it elgato or gato yeah. ne gato negro gato, gato negro yeah 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 the black the black can yep 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 yeah, uh, what you should say? package them with some black cat firecrackers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what did Anthony say? Coleman can quote the entire Scar Scarface movie and is the best wingman ever. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to tell you a quick story. Me and Anthony, we went to a strip club in Hialeah at, at Lazona Palooza. We're in, we're in Florida, Miami. And it, it was only mm -hmm. me and Anthony to, um, we went to a strip club in Hialeah. And it was fucking, bro, it was shady as hell in there, dude, right? And, and Anthony, this is back when he drank, so he was a little bit drunk. And uh, man, the way you know these girls were stripping, and, and I, I didn't even get it anymore. I was laughing my ass off. And then also, we were at Ball. You ever hear of Ball and Chain in Cayocho in Little? It's in Little. It's in Little Havana um, in Miami. It's the street's called Cayocho. Yeah, yeah I know, I know. Yeah, Eighth Street, right? Yeah. So we went to a, a bar there. It's called Ball and Chain. And in the back, they have a they have a they have a stage where live bands per perform and it's all like Cuban music, you know, and, and he was just in front of everybody dancing. It was, it was man, he had me cracking up, man. <laughs> well, I'm glad somebody could dance in this room because he asked my wife about me and she just cracks up. She goes, don't even dance. I said, honey, the rule of dancing is simple. Dance like nobody's watching because it doesn't matter. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm not out to impress anybody with my flailing arms and whatever I do, the stupidity that I have. I'm just having fun. Yeah. And you don't have to have fun with me. You could sit down and watch me have fun and be embarrassed by my fun. But I'm not embarrassed with my dancing. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm a fool when I'm on a floor. Right. I'm a dancing fool. All right. Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, he said he should have gotten a Cuban necktie that night. That's funny, man. But um, he's gonna unleash information anyway, that maybe we don't want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I won't divulge too much information. No, no. Some things. But are hey, real quick. These days. Yeah. Hey, real quick. I want to show the 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 audience real quick. The yeah, two, yeah. Let me let me spotlight you here. Hold on. Yeah, the two, the two. So these, so the the Mr. Desperado came out last year at PCA at the PCA trade show, and then the last Barbarian came out. Uh, I believe it was two years ago. But these yeah. are the two new sizes that we just released at PCA two months ago. So as you can see, it's a it's a. These are sealed. I always keep my personal boxes sealed. I'll open them up one day. But anyway, it has the year on the front. Um, so go go get these. It's a it's a Mr. Desperado. Connecticut wrapper, which means it goes through two growing phases. When that, when that, when the flower before the flower blooms, we we cut the flower off and we replant it. So it goes through two full growing cycles. So it gives it a very distinct um, aroma, flavor, even the look of the Connecticut. It's like a, it's like a beautiful. Uh, you got You got You got If you haven't had one, you guys got to try them. Um, and then also, there's the reflection. So when you do a Desflorado, what you just, if I understand what you just said, so the proper process is you don't just deflower it you actually replant the flower you said yeah exactly. and it grows it just like you're sticking in the ground and it starts to grow again yeah it goes through two full growing cycles ah yep okay hey what's up monica what's going on why is my hold on let me let me go back to my live here because i think i'm hold on one sec bud i think i have a Hold on one sec. Okay. So anyway, and then yeah, so so it goes through two full growing cycles. So it's it doesn't taste like your 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 regular Connecticut. It's, it has a right. sweet tanginess to it. That's my favorite cigar we made so far. The the, the last barbarian's my it was this was my favorite until we did the Desperado. But anyway, also the last barbarian, um again, six and a half inch by 56 double perfecto. We had the level nine rollers at the factory roll both of these cigars. These cigars burn like a dream. Um, so go get them. 20 count boxes. They retail for only $13 a piece. So go grab these. Yeah, that. There you go. Yeah. Boom. So they're shipping now or they've shipped? 
they've they've begun they've begun shipping already about uh maybe like three weeks ago we started shipping them. I think it's okay. about three weeks ago. Yeah. All right, everybody. So and and if if people are wondering where to uh find Sinestro cigars, let mm. me just pop this up on the screen. So in case you're wondering about where to find them, I just key this up for one second. Yeah, throw it up, Jimmy. And also, I always tell people check us, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. Instagram, just 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 search Sinistro Cigars. So can... this is SinistroCigars.com. Yep. Um, you can see right in here. This is kind of I think this is like a one page site. It just keeps scrolling down, but the menus take you to those areas. There's a product catalog. Um, pops up. This gives you all the different cigars all the blends this is very helpful for a guy like me who reviews cigars it yep. requires less emails yeah um so th this just goes on with the whole portfolio i mean you can really begin to see how some of this stuff just pops and we mentioned the gold edition here there's a beautiful gold band on this one right there's the best serrano right there i love that thing um and then also we have a find a store locator so if you ever want to see where you know what stores are on there? There's a, there's a link on there. Also, we have some merchandise you on there. Here too. you go. Find find here. You... Oh, you know what else I thought was interesting? Um, so in here you can come in and see. This is this is. Let me just pan out of here so you can see. This is the United States. There, they got some really good coverage. Um, East Coast, West Coast, a little bit Midwest, down to Texas. Um, but then become a retailer. I saw this and I thought this was interesting. Because um that's it say. So this is this is something you didn't mention, and I, I forgot to bring this up. So what's cool about this, you make it very clear to everybody, not just retailers, and consumers should notice too, is that you provide 24-7 customer support to your retailers with unhindered access to the company owners. Can you explain how that works from a shop to you? Yeah, so I get messages from both retailers and consumers real quick. What's up, Monica? Thank you so much. I get, re I get, even on my personal Facebook pages, I have, a, I'm friends with a lot of retailers on my page. So, you know, I, I might get messages at, at, at eight in the morning or, or 11 o'clock at night. And I reply, I mean, you could ask anybody. I reply right away. If somebody emails, I'll either email right away or I'll, I'll call them right away. Anytime we have any issues, um, it's taken care of right away simple as that you know because trust me you know when i was in my early 20s I, when i was in college i did customer service so but more importantly again i came from the retail side so i own a cigar lounge too and one of the many things i wanted was you know obviously good customer service so that's something we pride ourselves on for sure i handle probably 90 percent of the customer service all right oh yeah. there you go there's the other side of your equation that you do that keeps you busy mm -hmm. so that link there if if, if is is where we had some confusion because um it said on the website it says to be a partner with us and we would get so many e emails from people saying hey i want to be a partner with you could you send me some free stuff i'm like no no I, what that means is that <laughs> the retailers the retailers that are interested in bringing in the line yeah so we would, i remember we were getting like hundreds of emails from consumers like hey man um I want to be a partner. Do you have, you know, free swag and free cigars you can ship to us? I'm like, oh, I feel bad. And, you know, our retailers would get pissed off if they knew we were doing that. They're trying to sell our cigars. So that link there yeah. is, 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 is mainly for retailers if they were interested in bringing a brand into their store. You know, there was a period of time there where the F, as much as we don't like the FDA in our humidors, the FDA gave the brand owners kind of a gift originally by saying you weren't allowed to give free cigars to yeah. consumers right. right you can hand a sample to a shop you could have gave a sample to me to review but you couldn't give one to a consumer and they backed down off of that at the end yeah. all right so it kind of opened the floodgates again you know <laughs> no you're right hey man at the trade shows, you weren't allowed to give any samples out unless they had a business license. Yeah, that was some crazy stuff. Yeah. Yep. All right, so we have uh, gone uh, well past the hour and a half, Mark. Um, at this point, uh, I want to say 
Thank you for taking your time out to join Taking with the Nub. Um, oh. Thank you for educating me briefly on how we uh, make this more public to everybody for future shows. So uh, I'll remember to hit that button. Um, I so when I put when I pushed it out, I always push it out to be uh, public. But what happens is you got to go to that particular feed in Facebook. I mean, they make it so hard. It's such a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's good to know. Hey, man, I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the last word. Yeah, I was going to say, don't thank me, man. Thank you so so much for having me, Jimmy. Thanks for reviewing our cigars. Thanks for making time to come to the booth and talk to me. I always send you – you're you're one of the guys we send our press releases to, so you're taking your own time to to send those press releases out. So, you know, thank you, bro, for – you know, because you don't have to – you're not getting paid to do that, man. So thank you and everyone else, and thanks, everyone, for tuning in and supporting our brand so much. Thank you. And follow okay. us on Instagram. Follow Instagram, go to their website, check them out. And if there's a shop near you uh, that carries them, you can find them and go there and check out some Sinestro cigars. Because I'm going to tell you, these are these are fine. And oh, by the way, these El Burros, if you're looking for that value cigar that's going to give you a quality experience mm -hmm. for a right price, you're looking for that, this is it. Yep. You might end up filling your humidor with Thanks, man. Okay. With that, that's our show. I want to thank our sponsors for uh, sponsoring them. Without our sponsors, the show is always a little bit hard to do. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thanks, and guys. Uh, we'll see you again uh, next week. And I'll have a, a sh I'll announce who that is uh, later in the week. Um, with that, the show is a wrap.